NVIDIA is making money, but not that much more than AMD. Hey, watch out, Apple's getting viruses and AMD's cheap GPUs. We got details finally. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. We're gonna start off today talking about NVIDIA's Q4 earnings report where they detailed all of the money that they made and the lesser money that they made versus last year. So they came in at a graphics revenue decreased by 46% from last year. Overall, they were down 21% from last year to be at only 6.95 billion. And their graphics revenue, their gaming revenue was at 1.83 billion. However, one of the things that Jensen Wong said said in this discussion was the fact that they are anticipating that AI and specifically neural nets that happen to use NVIDIA GPUs are going to explode their revenues because of course they are saying that there's no question that this is a very big moment for the computer industry. In no computing era did one computing platform, ChatGPT, reach 150 million people in 60, 90 days. I mean, this is quite the extraordinary thing. And he said that AI processing performance has increased by a factor of 1 million over the last 10 years, whereas traditional computational power over a decade could only expect to go up a hundred times. So AI is rapidly advancing. Chat GPT AI models are using 10,000 NVIDIA GPUs to get this done. And it looks like NVIDIA is well positioned to take over that market with tensor processing, with all of the cores that they've put on there. They bet big on the AI inference models and it looks like that's paying off for them regardless of the fact that it's not paying off in gaming. Which is what an analysis came out and showed. NVIDIA talking about how they made $1.83 billion in the gaming sector sector, but when you look at what AMD made in the same quarter, well, they made $1.644 billion in the same quarter. So Nvidia is only slightly bigger than AMD when it comes to the gaming department. Now there is a huge caveat with that, whereas Nvidia's main gaming sales are gonna be GeForce Now, uh, Shield stuff maybe, and mostly the graphics cards, the gaming graphics cards that the everyday person buys. AMD's gaming revenue is composed of the GPUs, just like Nvidia's is, but then the the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, which are selling hand over fist, especially the PlayStation 5 is one of Sony's fastest selling consoles ever. They also have, I don't know if they're including Teslas in that revenue because they're using Navi GPUs for the gaming, but regardless, AMD overall in the gaming sector is doing very well. A lot of that seems to be coming from the console partnerships, especially when AMD, depending on where you're looking, only has a market share of between five and 20% of the discrete GPU market, it doesn't look like a lot of people are actively picking them up for discrete GPUs in their systems. It's mostly Nvidia on that side, but when you consider the fact that a lot of people do have consoles, they were in the PlayStation 4, they were in the Xbox One series, AMD's gaming revenue seems to have been working out for them by betting on consoles and not worrying about PC people slotting them into their system. But it's not just on the gaming side that AMD is doing well, there's more data coming out that AMD is expected to occupy over 20% of the server CPU market this year, as well as 8% of the ARM market, which just to put into perspective how insane that is and give you some context for what we talked about yesterday with Intel cutting their dividends because they need to get more competitive. AMD, when it was saying that they were looking to hit 10% of the server market share back when they started releasing the Epic chips was thought unfathomable because the Opteron processors and everything else that they had in the data center, I think that they were at 1% and they were not being considered for anything. Thing. That has completely flipped. AMD is rapidly growing. At this point, Epic makes the most sense from what I gathered for data centers for them to do it in a cost-effective manner. And it looks like things are mightily changing. But if you wanna try to build out your own little home server, home lab setup, maybe you should consider today's video sponsor so that you could build your own because Silverstone has their brand new SATA D1 and RM51 cases. The SATA D1 is gonna be a brand new case that's gonna allow you to slot in a ton of hard drives. This is based on the popular H1 high airflow case, as well as the Q1, which was certified by Cybernetics to be the most soundproof PC case on the market. But the D1 is focused on storage with the D standing for drives. They have tons of storage options, five and a quarter inch base so that you can actually have optical drives or even replace those for regular drives. Because Silverstone doesn't want you to be stuck in the olden times of having 1990, early 2000s chassis when you actually want to upgrade to the modern era in a modern chassis, Silverstone designed the D1 for you. They also designed the RM51 case you 
want a server rack for your PC, but you also want to potentially use it as a tower because it can be customized either way, having handles for you to slide it in as a 5 view server rack or even having feet that you can stand it up on in case you wanted to have it more traditional looking server setup. But it can also fit Silverstone's Air Penetrator 184i Pro intake fans, producing a lot of airflow. It can fit all of the latest CPU coolers, the latest GPUs, and can fit a 360 mil radiator. Silverstone making it so that you can build out your own home surfer in an effective modern chassis. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. And Reese didn't sponsor me yesterday with UFD deals. Will he grace us today? He doesn't have water today. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals on the internet. And it is Friday. If you guys have been holding off on upgrading to the Ryzen 7000 series in preparation for the X3D chips, then don't worry, I have you covered for everything else. First up, we have this Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM. This 32 gig kit running at 6,200 megahertz at CL36 is going for only $164.99, which is 39% off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then the perfect pairing for that is this ASRock B650 Pro RS motherboard. With its AM5 socket and DDR5 RAM support up to 6,200 megahertz, it is the perfect match. You can pick this up for $194.99 99 cents, which is 25% off and the lowest price in 30 days. But those are the deals. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And like always, the links will be down in the video description. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Hopefully he'll have water tomorrow, Reese. I'm, I'm looking forward for that happening. And also Reese, you might wanna look out for viruses on your Mac since you're a Mac boy, because it's coming out that there are hidden Trojans, crypto mining malware that's being found on some of the software that's being downloaded illegally on pirate websites. Final Cut Pro being found to be one of the latest things that's actually having crypto mining jackware crypto jacking that's what it's called i don't want to know what jackware is but this is actually impressive because it's actually hiding itself from mac os macs are typically known as not being able to get viruses which is a complete lie in the first place but mac os should typically detect something like this especially in something that's one of their most commonly used software on their platform but the way it obfuscates is actually pretty novel it hides from activity monitor and apple has come out and said that they're updating their x protect to block the malware and work on new ways of detection to make sure that things are safer in the future. But this goes back to downloading pirated software can always be a crapshoot about whether or not it's gonna help you out, which just, I'm not in a fan of piracy. Just, I, I pay for all the software I wanna use and if I can't pay for it, I don't use it. That's my take and you can watch that take at a higher bit rate if you're watching on YouTube because YouTube's looking at rolling out a 1080p premium tier on the mobile app, which is kind of strange. It's gonna enable higher bit rate, at least based on the screenshot that we see. It doesn't have 4K as 1080p and 1080p premium, which likely means that they might do away with 4K on mobile devices, which is possible. However, it's not gonna be that big of a deal for number one, most mobile devices can't handle a 4K resolution. But one of the things that 4K does in Linus Tech Tips has gone into in-depth study to look at that increasing your resolution to 4K does increase the image quality because you are upping the bit rate from I think it's about 15 on 1080p all the way up to 40 when you go to 4K. So you're actually seeing more data coming through your screen regardless of whether or not you have a 4K display. This could be a way of doing it without actually upping the amount of pixels that YouTube's pushing out to your display. They're also updating the fact that you're gonna be able to have multi-language audio being overdubbed on videos in case you have that for being a larger creator, Mr. Beast trialed this. He merged all of his foreign language content channels all the way back into his main channel. And that's because YouTube developed this feature where you could have an overdub. One of the big things that he did was hire the voice of Naruto to actually narrate some of his content. This is likely gonna be used for larger channels. One of the things that I've been thinking about recently is that I would like to potentially offer hot news in a multitude of languages. However, I don't have the ability to pay anybody to actually do the voice dub for it. So. I was thinking about trying to find a foreign language AI generation, which I, I don't know if there's a good one out there. If you have a language that you want hot news to be naturally done in, let me know down in the comments. I wanna hear like from our community, are you okay with it just staying in English or would it make it more accessible for you and for you to be able to share it with your friends to have it in a multitude of languages? Let me know down below in the comments, but you know what else is getting an update, not just YouTube, Half-Life 1, that's right, ray tracing update coming out. The ray tracing mod for it, in case you wanna check it out, we'll leave links in the video description, but you can see that, oh, look at that ray traced. 
Half-Life. Just like everything's getting ray tracing, everything's getting AI generated. And we've talked about this before. There was a book that was submitted for copyright that had AI generation going on into it. And the US Copyright Office has withdrawn the copyright for the artwork on this specific book, instead only issuing the copyright for the text of the work and the arrangement of images and the text, but not a copyright for the images themselves because that does not have human authorship. However, the text selection, the coordination and the arrangement are under copyright, but the specific generation is not under copyright, which is an interesting distinguishment that's happening and likely will inundate the copyright claims office to like have to figure all of this out. The laws are not going to keep up with everything that's going on. This is going to be a wild time. Let me know what you think of this down below in the comments. A lot of people didn't think good of Netflix when they changed all of the stuff with the password sharing, raising their prices. But now if you live in one of 30 countries, you're going to have a price drop on your Netflix subscription. The US is not included, but there are places in the Middle East, Kenya, Europe, Latin America, and Asia that are getting some price drops in case you're one of the countries on the list. Congratulations. I don't get it. And I congratulate AMD on developing fast laptop processors. We talked about the 7745HX previously, and now we have details on the Ryzen 9 7945HX, which is their high tier 16 core processor. And what we're finding, at least based on this preliminary benchmark, is that it actually beats Intel's fastest mobile processor in single core performance and gets really close to it in multi-core. Part of that is because the Intel processor has 24 cores compared to the Ryzen 9 16 cores, but it is impressive that AMD is able to match that with only 16 cores. And you can see that its performance is actually ridiculously close to a Ryzen 9 7900X. But AMD looking like they're prioritizing the mobile generation a little bit more this year, which I appreciate, but not prioritizing the affordable graphics cards and delivering them onto your PCs. And now we have more details coming out from my drivers about the next GPUs that we're expecting to get from AMD. Allegedly, we're going to get a whole bunch at once. 7800, 7700, and 7600 are likely to launch at the same time and also at a very competitive and cost effective price compared to Nvidia's lineup, which doesn't mean a whole lot because we saw what the 7900 XTX was compared to Nvidia's lineup. It was $1,000 versus 1200 bucks, which is like, yeah, that's cheaper. It's still painful to most people's wallets. However, when it comes to the release timing of this, we got the 7900 series towards the end of last year. Kind of seemed like AMD had a good launch for that. There's a lot of stuff that they have to work out on the drivers. Not fully baked at its release. However, it's appearing that they're baking for a little bit longer. You're going to have to wait a little more than three months in order to get these because it's being reported that they're going to wait until the 618 holiday shopping sale in China in order to launch these to have large sales at launch in order to bolster their numbers. And when these come out, that'll put this at the end of Q2 for them to be able to get that money. And the 618 shopping holiday is on June 18th hence the name. So we might actually get it towards the earlier part of June, which would actually line up really well with a Computex launch, which would be a return to form for Computex because it's been not really a thing since 2019. That was the last time I went. We are looking at going to Computex this year as a UFD team. I'm, I would be heckin excited if we also got an AMD launch there. That would be that'd be pretty cool. And a, a 618 launch with a Computex announcement since that's the beginning of June would be phenomenal. We'd live stream it. We'd bring it to you. You ready for that? Let me know if you want us to do that down below in the comments and I'm going to let you know that I'm done. I'll see you back here on Monday for more of the hottest tech news out on the internet. Thank you.